Hey froggies! So today I'm doing a video tack review for Lacey Vader. She asked me to do this of her racing bridle. So this is a racing bridle that she sent me. It's pretty nice. I have to give her kudos for the padded noseband. Padded nosebands are really hard to do. Um, I still can't do them. But I think it's a really nice looking bridle. She did a really good job on it. It's pretty well put together. It looks like a traditional racing bridle. By the way, that's a black strap right about here. It's a little hard to see because Ruffian's so dark. But it's a really nice bridle. I think she did an awesome job with it. Um, so now I'm actually going to kind of get to the review part of it. So the first thing I notice when I look at it is the wire buckles. So, um, real quick, this video is not meant as a, um, you know, like a rude, like this is what you need to fix. It's more of like a here's some constructive criticism from a tack maker. So I noticed the wire buckles on it are a little different than most wire buckles. Your wire buckles could be a little bit better um because they kind of fell apart especially on um, the throat latch which I didn't really get on it took me about 20 minutes to try and then the buckle broke so your wire buckles could be a little bit better um they're kind of just loosely wrapped I have a method that's pretty easy to thread on and take off and they're pretty sturdy the rest of the bridle really the only other problem I see would be your glue you, you use a little bit too much, I think, especially on the reins, because um, you can see, you know, that glue around the edges right there, right about there. Um, yeah, and then you have a few parts on the bridle where there's some glue coming off um, towards the base where the reins meet the bit, and I'll flip it around, and that's the other side of it. Um, so yeah, you can see I didn't attach the throat latch. But, yeah, just mostly your buckles and your glue. Um, I like the idea that you use the rain guards. My recommendation is to actually wrap the rain guard around so you will fold it over and glue it on both sides. Therefore, you don't just have this awkward thing on the other side. So what I would do is actually fold it over and glue it like that. Not like that, but kind of like that instead of having it stick out. So the rain guards I really like the idea of, except rain guards usually aren't in racing bridles. But I like the effort. Um, it looks really nice on horses though. Um, padded noseband I love. I love that that's on there. Um, another thing is I wouldn't attach your um, bridle there's a little loop that the bridle actually goes around through the noseband. You could do that. I wouldn't recommend doing it just because it makes placing the bit a little bit harder. Like as you can see, I still have to use sticky wax for it, but it, uh, it's a little bit harder to place and it can cause the bridle to pucker like it did right here. You can see there's, you can't really see because it's black horse. but um. The bridle does pucker a little bit and I can't tighten it because there is a loop that actually goes. So if you're going to do the loop, I would connect it at the base where the buckle is and uh, just do like maybe like a halfway thing so the bridle can still be adjusted and not do it in one small spot because having buckles and a loop that go through the bit kind of makes it a little um, useless, kind of. It makes it a little bit harder to fit the bridle to a horse than if you were to just leave it undone. So. So far we have buckles, glue, and um, just some adjustments to be made. Another thing is um, your reins. Your reins look really nice except there are some folds in it which, you know, you don't really see reins folding on a real horse. So that just goes along with packaging, um, I'd recommend. What I do is I will actually take the bridle, so the bridle's right here, and the reins go right about there. I'll actually twist the reins and fold them up so they're still round, but they're not being folded. So I can show you how to package that up at the end of the video. Um, but 
that's kind of all I really see. Oh, and your bits. Um, your bit looks really nice. I like how you tried to do a D-ring. That looks really cool, but I would not do a wire bit because the wire bit does look a little messy. Instead, I would use a jump ring bit. What you can do is can actually attach a crimp bead to the end of a jump ring. That's kind of just it. It's a really nice bridle. I would totally recommend it for anyone, um, but Lacey, those are the one, not the one, those are a few changes that you could make to make your bridle much better. Um, a quick overview, buckles, glue, just some basic assembly, um, your bit, and your packaging. Could just use a little bit of uh, adjustments. But I actually really like this bridle. I think you did a really good job. Um, racing bridles can be a little tricky, they can be really easy or they can be really hard. With the padded nose band they can be tricky but you did a really nice job with that. Uh, also making your, you can make your throat latch a little bit longer. So you know it makes it once again easier to fit to different horses along with being able to you know have it looser or tighter depending on what the look you're going for. So, yeah, Lacey, I hope you like this video, and I hope it helps you with your um, racing bridle making skills along with any English bridles or Western bridles you plan on doing in the future. I think the bridle looks awesome, and it would look good on any horse. I love how you use the three different colors, and you have, like, a color scheme that you stuck to, and I love it. I think you did a really good job, and I can't wait to see how it looks if you take any of my advice. And, yeah. Alright, so, um, like I said, I was going to help you make a bit, so here's what we're going to do. So, you have a jump ring, just a simple jump ring, and you also have a crimp bead. Okay, you're just simply going to take your jump ring, and you're going to open it up. So, it's like that. Okay. And holding your jump ring in your other hand, in your hand with your pliers, you're going to take your crimp bead. There we go. Take your crimp bead and you're going to thread it onto your jump ring. Then you're just going to close your jump ring. And it, depending on your brand, it can take some time. Then, just positioning your jump ring in whatever way you like. Um, I like to fold and crimp my bead over the crack separation of my jump ring, but you just do that and you just crimp it, so you just squeeze it with your pliers really tightly, and you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Okay, so it just has a nice little bead on the end, and there's your bit. You can use that as your bit for that. And now I'm gonna show you how to make wire buckles. So for wire buckles, um, you just take your wire, your wire, wire cutters, and your pliers. And all we're going to do is we're going to take our wire, kind of just unroll it a little bit. You're going to take your pliers and you're just going to pinch at the end, not leaving any back out. And you're actually going to just kind of twist your pliers. So all you're doing is twisting the wire around your pliers. So up until the wire overlaps, that is when you remove. And you have something that looks a little bit like this. Okay, and then all you do is taking your wire cutters, you're gonna clip off just right above where the two meet. And now you can just adjust your buckle to look nicely without overlapping over anything and you can just adjust it and then I like to crimp over it and make it all nice and flat and even and there's your wire buckle so um they're really easy okay now I'm going to show you how to fold your bridles so we're just going to move that and here we go so like I said um basically your bridle just kind of sits like that so I will obviously would hold this in my hand, but I just twist my reins so they're kind of like that. Then I fold up. 
so it kind of just sits in this little loop and that way you can slide it into a bag or slide it into a piece of paper um, and you can just ship it like that with any other thing that you may be sending. So, yeah. So thank you for watching Froggies and I hope this can also help you fix any of your tack making dilemmas. So I'm going to start doing these reviews more often so if you have anything you want me to review you can email me or contact me or private message me. All my info will be down in the description below. So yeah, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe.